What's up guys, welcome to Haptic Feedback, your one-stop shop for all VR hardware and haptic news. I'm your host Rejinx and I have 7 stories for you this month, from VR headset releases to cutting edge haptic research. We have a lot to pack in, so let's get to it. So anyone talking about VR hardware this month of course has to mention the release of the Oculus Quest 2 back on October 13th. But if you're taking the time to find this new show, I'm sure you probably already know all about it. So I'll do a very quick recap. The headsets were great, a few people had their elite straps break but they're getting them replaced, and Facebook makes a lot of people mad. But in this video I want to focus on more smaller hard to find stories so we're moving on. Do you want a headset with the highest resolution screen on the market, inside out tracking, wireless PC VR, face tracking, eye tracking, and hip tracking, all for under $500 and made by a company that no one's ever heard of and only has 11 employees? I bet you want some of those things. On October 17th, DECA, a startup company out of Singapore, announced their PC VR headset, the Decker Gear 1, was available for pre-order and is scheduled to be delivered in May. The headset boasts a resolution of 2160 by 2160 per eye, equal to the Reverb G2. Also, it will have four inside-out tracking cameras on the headset and a set of controllers that look similar in design to the Oculus controllers, but have a strap for your hand and claim to have finger tracking similar to the Valve Index controllers. And that's where the normal specs end. The innovation starts with two infrared face tracking cameras, one for your eyes and upper face, and one mounted below your nose to track your mouth. They posted a short and mildly impressive demo of the face tracking technology they're using. They claim that it tracks over 50 face muscles. Another unique feature is the inclusion of a hip tracker that they're calling the DECA Move and it is used to track the height and direction of your hips. So when players use slide motion, they'll be able to control their movement by turning their hips in their body instead of their head or controllers. And their last surprise was a $49 battery strap add-on that supposedly will allow wireless PC VR gaming, but there was no explanation as of yet on how it actually works. And all of this, if you include the price of the battery, will still be under $500. If you find this a little hard to believe, so do a lot of VR industry experts. The VR news website, Upload VR, did a little research into the co-founder and CEO of DECA, Orr Kuntzman. He is a serial entrepreneur who made much of his money creating adware companies and then selling them. So a healthy dose of skepticism is likely good here. But if you want to take a shot at this project, you can reserve your spot in line for only $10 on their website. And even if only some of their promises come true, this may actually help light a fire under the rest of the VR headset makers. With the HP Reverb G2 set to release in late November, HP decided it was time to announce the Reverb's bigger, badder brother, the Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition. The Omnicept Edition has the same base specs as the regular G2, including the best on the market 2160 by 2160 per eye resolution and the not best on the market Windows Mixed Reality tracking. But the Omnicept edition will also include eye tracking, face tracking, and heart rate tracking? Which makes more sense once you realize that it's not a consumer device. The website gives examples for its use such as first responder training, market research, and academic research. No price was announced, which means it's definitely a device aimed at larger institutions. But who knows, maybe some of this technology will trickle down to the next base version of HP's headsets. Microsoft Research is showing their new take on the old problem of force feedback hand controls, with what they are calling haptic pivot. Pivot! Yep, haptic pivot. They describe it as a wrist-worn haptic device that renders virtual objects into the user's hand on demand. Basically, it's a ball tied to your wrist that moves into your hand anytime you try to grab something in VR. I'm pretty sure we won't be seeing a consumer version of this anytime soon, but it's awesome to see that companies are still trying to crack VR's hardest problems in new ways. I actually do think it would be cool to try this with like a bowling game or maybe like a baseball game. Who knows, this might be coming to a VR arcade near you. On October 7th, 
VirtuX Omni announced they were getting back into the home VR market with their new omnidirectional treadmill simulator, the VirtuX Omni 1. For anyone unfamiliar with the Omni, it uses a bowl-shaped surface and requires special low friction shoes and then uses inertial sensors to track a person's position, length of stride, and how fast they are moving. The new treadmill sports a smaller form factor and removes the usual support ring that would encircle the user's waist, allowing for greater freedom of movement for the user's arm. It also enables crouching, kneeling, and jumping. The prototype video shows the user wearing a Pico Neo 2 standalone VR headset, but Omni says they have not finalized what headset would be coming with the Omni 1 when it ships. But they did say there'll be two different purchase options. Purchase option one would be the Omni Complete system, which includes the VR headset and will be $1,995. While the other one is called the Omni One Dev Kit, which is just the treadmill without the headset and will cost $995 and will require a PC VR headset for use. And one last odd buying option they're offering is that anyone can get 40% off the treadmill if they decide to invest $1,000 into Virtuex. And honestly, that actually makes me a little wary. Another thing that a Reddit commenter mentioned is that if you look at the prototype trailer, some of the moves the guy's making actually isn't the same moves that is happening in the background, though you can tell this was all put together for PR. Virtuex states that they plan to start shipping pre-orders of the treadmill sometime in the second quarter of next year. If you were someone who read Ready Player One and dreamed of having a full body haptic suit where they're finally gonna build one. Haptic X, the company behind the cutting edge force feedback haptic gloves, teamed up with research teams from Virginia Tech and the University of Florida to secure $1.5 million of funding from the National Science Foundation to build a full body haptic exoskeleton that they are calling ForceBot. According to Haptic X's website, ForceBot will enable users to feel the shape weight and texture of virtual objects and move naturally across buried virtual terrains and also intuitively manipulate objects from afar using a robotic avatar. The system wants to support both virtual worlds as well as being able to be used to control robots remotely for things such as surgery or bomb disposal. The project is funded for the next four years, but I wouldn't hold out any hope for a consumer level version of this super suit anytime soon. And the final story of the day, VR is coming to Xbox. Maybe, possibly. The speculation started on October 20th when a user on the official Microsoft Flight Simulator forums posted that he had found some interesting code while data mining the game. The user named Signific posted that he found references to two different VR builds in the game. One was called PC VR, but the other one is called Scarlet VR. Scarlet is an interesting name because it is the code name that was given to the newest version of the Xbox before it got its final, and honestly much worse name, the Xbox Series X. So could this be our first clue of an upcoming new console headset? Or is it just leftover code from internal tests? I guess we'll have to wait and see if Microsoft is ready to jump into the console VR market. And that's all the news I have for you today. And if you stuck around this long, then you probably want to subscribe because I'm going to be making one of these every month, keeping you up to date with all the VR hardware and haptics news. And if I didn't cover a story, please hit me up in the comments or on Discord. I'll leave that in the description and let me know about it because I just started doing this and I enjoy doing the research, but it'd be real easy for a story to slip by me. Also, if you're into gaming, I do a show on VR MMO RPGs every month as well, and I'll leave a link to that too. Thanks for watching, and between now and my next video, I hope to see you in the metaverse.